She was black, beautiful and talented, and sometimes just that bit temperamental. But during the early 70s, Leilani was the darling of the Australian turf. She became a public horse. She really did become a public horse and uh, she was jet black, which they also liked, blacks and greys. And she was jet black, she was flighty and... Uh, but she, I think the important thing about her is she just had this massive will to win under all circumstances. There were times when Leilani was winning and uh, very impressively that uh, I was asked the question on numerous occasions, uh, compare her with the Great Light Fingers. And I always used to say, well, one's chestnut and one's black. She was a true champion of her era. But if the Liberal Party had won the 1972 federal election, Leilani might never have seen a race course let alone become a champion. We lost the elections in 1972. I ceased to be a minister and I was uh, wanting to get out of the country for a while. So I, uh, with the Rices and uh, with Susan, we went to New Zealand for a holiday and I stayed with very old friends, Tom and Gay Williams, who have the Taparai stud uh, at Masterton in uh, New Zealand. And they had Oncidium standing still then. They'd had Agricola, it was a very famous stud, still is. And uh, on many of our walks and drives around in the property nearby, I noticed this uh, small, dainty black filly and I asked Tom about it. He said it was owned by an old fellow named Ian McRae, who was a decent bloke, and I just liked the look of her. And I went to Mr McRae, asked would he sell her to me, and he said no. And what most people don't know is that he then said to me that um, her dam had been so successful, she won about 16 races, uh, Lay was her name, she was, uh, as I recall, by summertime out of a mare called Sunkissed Flower, that uh, he thought he would breed from Leilani and not race her. And uh, I tried and tried to buy her and he I went back another day and he wouldn't be in it. I knew Bart had his caravan tour going through New Zealand so I rang him, caught up with him somewhere out of Auckland and asked him would he divert off and come to us and have a look at uh, not only fillies at uh, Tom Williams' stud but come down and have a look at this filly. He did. He wanted to buy straight away. We negotiated and negotiated. We couldn't, but in the end, uh, dear old Ian McRae agreed to lease her uh, to me, and uh, because I had Ian Rice on a holiday with me, I bought him in on it. Leilani was unraced as a two-year-old, but made rapid progress at three to win the AJC Oaks with Higgins aboard. Cummings then set her for the Caulfield Cup. In the spring, Higgins won the Turnbull Stakes on the mare, but couldn't make her Caulfield Cup weight. Mick Mallion could. Roy Higgins uh, apparently was talking to him and uh, he said, well, if he could ride the weight, that's the horse that he'd be riding in the cup. So with that, I said, well, if it's bloody good enough for Roy Higgins, it's got to be good enough for Mickey Mallion. So. 600 to go, Dandy Gemma length in front of Monolect in the centre there is uh, on the inside rather special boy. Over on the outside of it, Marinoto and the Ar Aramas dropped out, it's a million to one. Lalani going very well looking for a rails run and Martindale running on. Into the straight they race now and the leader Dandy Jim but Leilani's got out with Special Boy and coming at the leader. Leilani dashed to the lead, Bolotta's the danger out wide from Special Boy and Monolek. Leilani in front, Bolotta trying hard but Leilani stretching right out like a real cup horse. And Leilani striding away, here's the Caulfield Cup favourite. Leilani goes on to win by three lengths to Bolotta. I About didn't know how much ability she had before the Turak. I was only going on what Roy had sp uh, spoken of. Uh, but after I rode her in the Turak, it just went into the cup as far as I was concerned, as unbeatable. That's barring uh, any unforeseen happening, you know. Malian wasn't the only one who thought she could win. Unbeatable. And that's how it turned out. Racing this time. She Leilani jumped and began well. And I made my way across to the, uh, to the uh, inside, never stopped going forward and took up a lovely position. Uh, she was always in a, in a forward position, probably in the first half a dozen all the way. Really one of them rides that you've been with. A length and a half to go fun. Leilani third on the fence, a head away Gay Icarus. And with 700 to go, Leilani's been taken to the lead, a neck in front of Asgard. Wonder Gay Icarus getting through on the fence, a length to Wigloo, Arama struggling. Then Lord Metric followed by Broadway hit running on from Pilfer Turf Cutter. Behind them, go fun beaten from Grand Scale Princess Eulogy and like a lover's last. Gay Icarus and Leilani sprinted away at the 500. There's six lengths in front of Igloo with Turf Cutter running on from Lord Metric and Broadway hit. Leilani has dashed clear as they straighten for home. Melian riding for dear life and Leilani's run three lengths in front of Gay Icarus. Four lengths away, Turf Cutter, Igloo, Broadway hit, Pilfer. 
but with 150 to go, Leilani three lengths in front, Gay Icarus is weakening and then Turf Cutter, but it's Leilani's Caulfield Cup, the Bonnie Mare is going to win by four lengths, Broadway hit flashing up for second, Turf Cutter third, ahead away Gay Icarus fourth, then three lengths... Malin was suspended after the Cup, and with Higgins also on the sidelines, the brilliant Peter Cook was substituted. Leilani and Cook combined to win the McKinnon Stakes three days prior to the Melbourne Cup. However, the three kilogram penalty she had received following her easy Caulfield Cup win was a worry. I didn't say much uh, because I thought it wouldn't help and as a public figure people seem to interpret your statements in various ways but privately I anguished. She would have had to have set a weight carrying record. It was at least two and a half kilos more than Light Fingers had carried when she won the Cup. And as I recall, I may be wrong in this, but as I recall, had she uh, won it, uh, she'd have uh, had to have carried more weight than any other uh, filly or mare uh, since uh, Wakeful. And uh, she certainly had the task ahead of us, and uh, she gave it a as she did in everything, a very great show. Leilani is looking for a run between them, will need it. And here comes Captain Perry down the outside, and Turf Cutter. Turf Cutter is mowing grass. Battle Heights went to the front of the 200 metre mark from Leilani. Captain Perry on the outside then is Turf Cutter and Thing Big. Leilani is getting uh, two Battle Heights and on the outside, Captain Perry. Leilani just in front, Thing Big is picking it up down the outside, and Thing Big is going to have to win the cup. Thing Big is one, Leilani is second. The two that I'm questioning stand out uh, uh, the pluck and just sheer determination she showed in the Melbourne Cup and that's only overridden and I'm glad it is because it was a disappointing result by her performance only a few days later in the Queen's Cup on the Saturday when she stood on a, outside a gala red up I think he had more than 10 kilos advantage over her. Uh, it was certainly a significant advantage and uh, he went to a 25 length lead and she took the field up to him and then just motored past in the straight and went home with Roy riding her uh, being eased down and uh, that for a moment swept away the disappointment of Cup Day. But Lalani asked for the effort at the 300, it's Gala Red about three in front but Lalani's got it covered. Ten lengths away then, Battle Heights, Fort Hagen and Grand Scale. Lalani's race to the lead. Gala Red in second placing and then Battle Heights, Fort Hagen. But Lalani's going to coast the victory about four lengths to Gala Red. Battle Heights ran third, ahead away then Fort Hagen. Six lengths to Lord Metric. It was followed then by Grand Scale. Lalani's outstanding spring Next form uh, attracted an offer to race against Europe's best in the King George and Queen Elizabeth Stakes. It would have been the opportunity to race against Arle France and Dahlia, the great mares of North America and Europe, and uh, that wasn't to be, so we could never test her on the international scene. I often think that uh, were she racing today, I don't think there'd be much hesitation picking up the offer. Leilani returned in the autumn of 75 to win three successive weight for age races. A length to my friend Paul and on the inside of it, Munasta. All shots stretching out, but Leilani's got a break. All shots starting to run home hard, but Leilani two in front. All shots flying in the last little bit. Leilani in front, however, and she's too good. Leilani's won at three quarters of a length of all shot. Even though the brave little mare was winning, her jockey, Higgins, was worried. Each time I'd come back after the race and say, Bart, I don't know what it is, but there is something missing. I said, that, that, that real ping is, is just not there. It's, uh, there's some little thing, whether or not it's, uh, you know, she's not coming up this preparation. And when we start talking about champions, I'm talking about that's just after winning. Uh, I said, I, I just doubt whether she's back to what she used to be at this particular point. And uh, he said, oh, well, you know, we'll just keep pushing ahead. And, uh, and come the Australian Cup after a, oh, what I thought was an unimpressive win at Wait for Age prior to the Australian Cup, and then she was to come into that race with a pretty hefty weight on her back uh, under handicap conditions, uh, I must say I doubted her chance of winning that particular race. And when you put the result back down, Yes, it was courage. That was courage that won the race. Leilani's win in the Australian Cup was the high watermark of her career. She missed the spring of her five-year-old season, but returned to win the St George Stakes the following autumn in 1976. She was then set for the Tancred Cup in Sydney. A win here would see her become Australia's greatest stakes-earning racehorse ever. However, it wasn't glory that lay ahead for the great mare. It wasn't until uh, we travelled some five, six hundred metres of the Tancred that I said, hello, this is not the girl I know. There was no drive, there was no push, and 
by the time we got round the back of the course, uh, it was over. And I led her back into the mounting yard, and at the same time, um, there was Bart and uh, Susan and Andrew. They came running down out of the grandstand and uh, uh, naturally press all round. And uh, Well, there were times in my career that I got tears in my eyes, and that was one of them. To see her, or with a near foreleg, just hanging. Uh, I mean, my only thought was to try and grab Percy Sykes and get down to that mounting yard before anything do, anybody would do anything to her. Fortunately, Percy was about three feet ahead of me racing down there, and he gave her painkillers as fast as possible, and we knew her career was over. And um, losing uh, the Melbourne Cup was one thing, but losing her in terms of a racing career was the worst moment of my racing life. Leilani's last appearance on the racetrack was the only occasion the little mare failed to earn prize money. She recovered from her injury and later returned to her owner breeder in New Zealand. She died in Australia at Carrington Stud in the Hunter Valley in February 1989 after a somewhat disappointing breeding career.